Hello, welcome back. We're so glad that you decided to join us for this video. This is the second video in our series, What is Computational Thinking? Before we jump in, I think we better define some terms, just so everyone's on the same page. Okay, so let's get defining. We'll start with computational thinking. Computational thinking is a way to take a complex problem, understand what the problem is, and develop possible solutions. So I think it's best to think of computational thinking as a set of problem solving methods that express problems and solutions in ways that a computer could execute. You still with me? Yes. Now, we need to talk about different types of knowledge. When you're using your brain to think, you are gaining knowledge. Declarative knowledge tells us the what of the problem you're trying to solve, but it doesn't tell us the how. Imperative knowledge tells us the how in the problem, literally how you would find the answer. So, programming-wise, the declarative is information that describes what to do, but not how to do it. And the imperative is how you would solve the problem. Yes, exactly. So put in a different way, the declarative would be you asking your friend to paint a landscape. You don't care how they create it, it's up to them. And the imperative would be you asking your friend to paint a landscape by watching and following along to a painting tutorial. Letting the artist give them step-by-step -step instructions on how and where to paint each element of the landscape. Oh, okay. Like really getting into detail about how to establish the background of the picture and where you should paint different elements of the landscape. Like the parts of the whole. Yes, great. So the next term we should define is logic. For our purposes, you should think of logic as a set of principles underlying the arrangements of elements in a computer. Got it. So if else logic would be, if this condition exists, then do this. Else, do this other thing. Nice work. And problem solving should be thought of as a process of finding solutions to difficult or complex issues. For example, the red paint is red, the blue paint is blue, and the yellow paint is yellow. And these are the primary colors that are the building blocks of the color spectrum, meaning all other colors are created from these primary colors. So, if you had yellow, blue, and red paint, but you wanted purple, how would you go about using the tools you had to create purple from these paints? We know that you would mix the blue and the red to create purple, right? Yes, that is what you should do. But if you didn't know where to start, you would start experimenting with all the colors to find the answer you need. Analysis is a detailed examination of the elements or structure of something. So we know if we want to create purple, we would use some combination of the primary colors. Right, and decomposition is breaking something down into smaller parts. So composing purple is to take blue and red, put them together, and create the new color, purple. So decomposing it would be the opposite, which would require knowledge about color theory and primary colors. Problem solving, analysis, and decomposition sort of go hand in hand when thinking about how you get to a specific result. Yes! Let's move on to algorithm, which is a sequence of rules and instructions that you use to solve a specific problem. Okay, so all these concepts within this list they're like your computational thinking toolbox, right? Right. We'll use all these elements to inform our approach to the problem. What problem? Any problem. The problem is going to change. These are the tools you would use to solve any problem. Ah, uh, I see. Because you first need to figure out what the problem is, the what, and then also define how you would solve the problem, the how. Right, but it's more than that. We're trying to learn how to express solutions as computational steps or algorithms that can then be carried out by a computer. So breaking the problem down into parts or steps, recognizing the order and finding patterns or trends, developing instructions to solve the problems or steps for the task, and then generalizing those patterns and trends into rules, principles, or insights. That's basically computational thinking. Have you ever sat down in front of your computer and not been able to even start? What? Obviously. So, in that example, we should use those tools we just learned about to figure out the what and the how. 
to analyze, decompose, and eventually solve whatever the problem is. These terms will be the start of your toolbox for understanding and utilizing the FTC Blocks computer programming tools. We'll be coming back to these vocabulary terms again and again throughout these videos, so keep them in your mind until next time. Thanks for joining us again. Make sure to tune in to our next video where we'll be discussing computational thinking in relation to cooking using a recipe. Will there be cake? Conceptual cake, no actual cake. Well. Even though there's no actual cake, we'll hope you join us next time for Section 3, Computational Thinking as a Recipe. Goodbye, Bye, everyone! everyone.